Hello, everyone, and welcome to Rob Has a Podcast. I'm your host, Taryn Armstrong, and I am here tonight to recap the finale of Big Brother Canada 10. <laughs> and what a finale <laughs> it was. Um, I am here live from New York in a hotel room uh, that I just ran from a viewing that we had where we all watched it together. It was a it was a blast. Uh, but I do apologize if my Internet is a little bit slow uh, <laughs> here as we get through the episode. But luckily, I have two uh, beautiful women here tonight to oh. talk me through this oh. finale. Uh, Chantel <laughs> is with me here tonight. Chantel, how you doing? I'm doing great, but my voice is not doing so well. So I'm going to do my best <laughs> to be able to communicate with you. And Taryn, you know why my voice is, you know, not doing so well. It's because we've been talking so much these past couple of days because we've been having an awesome time in New York. But I just got back to Toronto, watched this finale, and I thought it was awesome. So I'm happy to be here. Just bear with me. I'm so sorry that my voice isn't great. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. Uh, it's better to have no voice than no internet. <laughs> so, uh, also with us tonight, uh, she was supposed to be our constant, and then uh, she also had some tech issues, so hopefully those are good and all set. But uh, Melissa Denny is here. How are you doing, Melissa? I'm doing great. Yeah, I was supposed to be the anchor for this panel, and instead I had a power <laughs> outage. Dude. Dude, uh, dude, yeah. dude, dude. I don't have my soundboard. <laughs> well, it, it sounded, I, I got the message. It sounded squid game enough. Uh, yeah, I was supposed to be the constant here. And then I had a power outage directly, like as I'm sitting here waiting backstage to be led into the podcast. And then the Wi Fi went out. So, yeah, it's been a whole thing. But hopefully now we're all good. Hopefully. Um, I don't know why they don't want us to talk about this finale. It was so exciting, so unexpected. I mean, I think we all, even just like from the last round table, thought we knew what was going to happen in this finale and every twist and turn. I mean, I was not expecting any of it. Uh, so this was very exciting. Congratulations to Kevin. Ah, yeah. Awesome. I mean, what what a what a finale here. Uh, mm -hmm. Just, you know, just over 24 hours ago, I think the majority of the fan base was, you know, they were doing think pieces on Kevin's fourth place game. Uh, they were talking about what was going to happen here in the final three. Um, and then out of nowhere, Kevin survives to the final three. I apologize that we were not able to get a recap up from last night. We were all out uh, here in New York. But uh, but a surprise survival to the final three. Then it's like, OK, he's in there with an outside chance to uh, to maybe win that final three HOH and win the game. And he gets to part three. He loses in a tiebreaker. And just like that, the season is over for Kevin mm -hmm. again. Yep. Until not since John Cutnetta. I think, have we been this surprised at a final three decision uh, over the last few days? Kevin has clearly gotten into Josh's head and Josh cuts. I cannot believe that moment. He cuts Betty for Kevin. Devastating her face. I just felt so bad for her. It was, I, I literally didn't see it coming until he said my best friend. And then I was like, wait, what? Like, First, I was like, oh, wait, is Kevin his best friend now? And then I was like, oh, my God, he's doing it. Oh, my God. I mean, it's one thing to cut someone when you're making the right choice, like when you're making a choice that will make it easier for you to win. But like, I mean, obviously, he couldn't see it from within the house from what but from like a mile away, we all saw it on the outside of the house that like Kevin would win if he got if he got to the end with that jury. I mean, you saw the round table where they were singing his praises and they were pissed at Josh. And then they were like, well, Betty survived week after week, but like to do what, which like, I mean, I don't necessarily agree with all the jury's thoughts, but I do think that like, the fact is, is that they clearly wanted Kevin to win. And then for Josh to cut his number one ally, his best friend, the person who he said, like he would never betray again, uh, for Kevin, it just did not make any sense. It really, it honestly didn't make any sense. I mean, 
I was so shocked. I was so shocked. I was so heartbroken. I was just like, I thought that he was never going to do that again. And he was just going to be like, right. I'd rather lose to my best friend. Mm -hmm. I want one of us to win some money, like, or both of us to win some money. I really didn't think that he was going to do that to her. It was so, yeah. it was really heartbreaking. I'm a fan of Kevin, absolutely. And I'm shocked that he even got to the final two from what was happening in these last couple episodes. But I think he deserves the win. But oh, it was a heartbreaking moment for me. It, really. yeah. it was. I mean, like, I mean, when I was the, through the whole speech, I too, I was like, he's going to say Kevin, obviously. And even when he said best friend, I was like, wait, no, that's that was a, that was you know not real. And then like the, the the watch party, everyone was so loud. I didn't even hear him say Betty. I just saw her face. I was like, no, he didn't just say Betty. Uh, I was genuinely in disbelief. And then like just watching her come out, I was like, oh, my God, I like I just felt so so much for her in that moment. The fact that not only did he just cut her, but clearly did not give her any warning at all. This was another blindside. I mean, this was, uh, you know, this was, uh, I mean, yeah, I guess, I guess not since Cody cut Nicole. Right. But, uh, you know, but like she, I, she fully expected him to take her there. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, which makes sense because he probably should have taken her there. But I mean, it reminds me of like John party and Netta where she was like completely blindsided, but like, it made she sense. had an idea by the end, though, because, yeah, because it had gotten awkward, or at least, you know, so she says. <laughs> but still, it's like it just honestly, it did not make any sense for Josh. And I think he probably sees that now. But at the time, it made more sense to him that Kevin was not going to win because he wasn't winning competitions. He wasn't doing anything. Betty was a survivor. She was an underdog. She was, you know, week after week, like fighting for her life in the house and making it through every time. I mean, like. The narrative makes sense, but I think he just didn't realize he had like the mastermind sitting up there next to him as his other option. I think that he just didn't understand. Yeah, it's still really surprising. Yeah. But, but I also found that with Kevin's speech, I don't usually like the yelling speeches, but like he yeah. got me riled up. I was like, yeah, let's get it. Like do it for the five, do it for it. And like, and I was surprised that it really, I, I think it really worked. For the people that he was uh, playing with um josh's speech i didn't think was effective at all especially with the way they felt about him i think part of it had yeah. to do with the fact that they already were rooting for kevin so then when kevin's speech was like and you like i you know you were the biggest threat and you and you and directing it to everybody as an individual i think they really like bought into it and were like excited by it same with like the paris versus kayla thing i think that if kayla had paris's same speech like where she was like kind of like pointing at people and all that sort of stuff like I don't think people would have vibed with that as well. Like they wouldn't be like cheering her on. Cause like they weren't rooting for Kayla. They were rooting for Paris. So like, I think if Josh tried to do that same thing, I don't know if it would have like gone like over as well with the jury, but I think because they already were rooting for Kevin and then Kevin went and individually addressed them. Like, I think it went really well for him. So like, I think it was a good move. And, and Kevin, Kevin as a winner here is uh, a, a major uh, sort of a trend trend breaker here. Uh, the first ever winner to survive the week one vote. First time ever wow. that the survivor of the first week's vote has gone on to win the game. That is a stat that I have quoted for a while because <laughs> it is a death Nell to a player's game. Kevin breaks that streak. Another streak that Kevin is going to break is that uh, he is the first winner um, for a very long time to have uh, won the, the game without having won an HOH. The last time that happened was Dr. Will in season two. Oh my God. That's, so That's wild. wild. Yeah. That's so, I mean, you could tell Kevin was like in shock when he won. He like could barely even walk up the stairs. Josh was like, go, come on. We got to go outside. <laughs> it was like, and then he goes out and he's just in complete disbelief. I, I mean, I was so happy for him. I think that he played a really great game and he played a fun game too. He, that's the kind of game that I like to watch where the person's not taking it too seriously. They're not being, you know, malicious or mean about any of the moves. It's just a game and they're doing what it takes to win. And that's the way it should be played. It shouldn't be take it nothing should be personal about big brother i mean obviously i understand when it gets personal like don't get me wrong but i love the idea that he's like these are game moves i have to like remove my like own personal feelings from the game and just move forward like doing what's best for me but also having so much fun with it 
it, it just honestly, what a great game to watch. Kevin did so amazing. I, I, I'm thrilled, honestly. I mean, when do I ever get what I want in a finale? Literally <laughs> never. So this is like new territory for me. Usually I've got like a veil on or I'm very upset. So this is, or I'm just very neutral and do not care. So this is honestly very exciting. And, uh, you know, when they started off at that recap, I made Dennis watch it with me because he never watches Big Brother. And I was like, look, like, the, you just watch this three minute recap so you can see how the season went so you can understand like who these people are just like three minutes three minutes of your time and he's like all right I'll watch three minutes and by the end of it I was he's like who do you want to win and I was like Kevin and we were both like yeah but that's not gonna happen so you know oh well forget that and then by the end I texted him I was like Kevin won and he was like oh my god so yeah very exciting very thrilling and yeah, I love I that mean, the strategist uh, wins. It's so good. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just like the yes. different type of gameplay. We've had so many like comp beasts win, comp beasts win. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't really care about the comp beasts. I want to see the people that are working behind the scenes that are making it happen for them. And he's such a great representation of that. And so hopefully that will change the trend maybe of the style of gameplay that's going to be coming in the future. So I think mm -hmm. it's really positive for the longevity of Survivor. Um, Survivor, oh my God. <laughs> Big Brother. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I think that it, it's winners like Kevin that have kept the show alive for as long as it as it has mm -hmm. uh, been, right? Like um, being able to win the game without winning competitions, it's an incredibly diff difficult feat to accomplish, um, but it tends to be the most entertaining way to win because, uh, you know, winning competitions is kind of playing the game on easy mode uh, and not winning the competitions is like playing it on, uh, you know, extra hard uh, Elden Ring mode. Um, and so, uh, you know, here, here we are. And, and of course it had to be, it had to be in the most difficult, like roundabout fashion that Kevin slithers his way through one more time <laughs> that uh, it couldn't be that, you know, him or Helena won that final four veto, got to the final three, took each other, whatever. It couldn't have been that he won this final HOH, took Betty, won the game or whatever. It had to be every step of the way, the hardest possible path for him to get there. And yet still he got there. Mm hmm. So impressive. I love it. So yeah, I absolutely agree with you guys that like, I think this is really good for the game moving forward. Cause I, I honestly thought it was going to be like, we're very impressed with Kevin's gameplay, but like, he's not going to win. So like everyone in the future is going to be like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Cause even though it's entertaining, like what does it get me? Just like a cup, some like, you know, time on TV and then that's it. Like I want to win. So I got to just play under the radar or like win a bunch of comps or blah, blah, blah. But the fact that he, you know, actually won this, I think is so good for the show. I think it will give people, you know, the confidence to go in there and play like Kevin played, play, you know, just pure like mastermind strategy, but actually like have a chance to win. I, I just think it's so good. I love it. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, part of me wonders, like, how far back does this decision go for Josh, right? Because basically, ever since Josh found out from Betty about Kevin being a manipulator, one of the first things he said, and I noted this in both his and Kevin's game recaps, he said, oh, my God, he's going to get every single vote if he gets to the end. He said that to Betty. Um, and then... Over the course of the next week, uh, or at least a few days until the feeds went off, Kevin, and he had been doing this prior, of course, like talking to Josh about how he's definitely going to lose. Kevin really played up. I'm going to lose every single vote. I'm going to lose. I'm the, I'm the worst person here to, uh, to win this game. There's, the jury's never going to vote for me. Um, do we think that Josh, in that Final Four decision, when he saves Betty, Betty asks him, who do you want to leave? Uh, is he already thinking at this point, I want Kevin there because I think I might want to take him over Betty. I mean, honestly, I have no idea. Cause like, <laughs> I, I don't, don't think any of it makes sense because it's just like, I can't get into his mindset and be like, Oh, well, this is why blah, blah, blah. Cause I really just, I don't get the logic behind it. I think we need to have him like explain it to us because I, I he probably was already thinking that. I mean, I, I, th I'm honestly confused because the whole time he was like, here's my argument against Helena. So I thought like he wants Betty in the final two because they're friends, but if not Betty, then Helena. 
I did not think he had well, any intention of taking Kevin. So part of me wonders now, um, when he's in the diary room saying, I'm, I don't want to nominate Helena because I want to use this as an argument in the event that I'm sitting next to her. Part of me wonders now if he was saying in the event that I'm sitting next, sitting next to her because at that point it was pre-veto and he was worried that she might win the veto um, or that like she might just somehow survive and that maybe Betty would evict Kevin or something. But maybe, maybe he is genuinely never actually considering taking her to the final two. Uh, maybe he's thinking it's Helena or Kevin at that point. Um, it, like, or, or, I mean, it's it's Josh, so who That's knows, true. right? Like, there's a very good chance that he... Because Betty asks him, like, you know, were you always, always planning to make this decision? He says no. He says, uh, you know, and, and I believe that... I, I could absolutely believe that, too, where, um, you know, maybe it's something that happened while the feeds were down and we didn't get any, any content uh, from the final three uh, mm -hmm. here. Not a single scene from just Josh, Betty, and Kevin, um, which is which is disappointing because clearly there's a lot that went down there. It's it's just like those lost Netta and John and uh, Sabrina uh, days that uh, that changed everything here. But um, I am I'm definitely very curious to know. I will be talking to the final three tomorrow morning, so um, hopefully we can get some uh, some answers from Josh in terms of what he was thinking here. But uh, man, it's um, it, it's it's a lot. <laughs> Well, I wonder if it's his lack of knowledge of the game, because like, it, I think that maybe if he's thinking, everybody's been telling him, oh, you're playing a game kind of like to Sean, thinking that he can win, cut his best friend and like get the votes in the end. And maybe he was thinking that that might happen, um, but not really knowing how the game really works. He didn't really see all the other angles and really seen Kevin's game and what he was really going up against. So I think it might be his lack of game knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's wild. He wins. Um, I believe eight, eight to one, um, was the, mm -hmm. was the ultimate vote count, uh, with Betty, the think, only vote for Josh. I did not think Canada was going to vote for Kevin just I because either. I had been well, seeing like a bot a bunch of like negativity about Kevin on the Facebook groups or whatever. And I assumed that that was where the votes were coming from. So I did not think Kevin was going to get this. Well, so I, th I think maybe maybe what could have happened here, uh, and obviously maybe Kevin just went outright, but uh, I think there's a chance that in a final three of Kevin, Josh, Betty, Josh and Betty are aligned. They're like, um, you know, they're friends, they're together. Kevin is mm -hmm. solo. So Betty and Josh may have split some votes. Um, yeah, and uh, and that might have allowed Kevin to kind of uh, pull through um, and take those uh, those votes, especially especially if the split votes were favoring Betty over Josh, which I think is it's possible they were. Um, so that could have definitely uh, may, uh, contributed, which is, again, why I'm not a fan at all. Obviously, I didn't get to talk about this last night, but I hate Canada's vote here. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, I get it as a necessity when you need to swap out a vote for a juror that quit or something like that. But if Canada ends up someday as the deciding vote oh, between God. two players, that that is the day that I don't I don't know what I will do about this show. Because <laughs> it's, I mean, because look at what we're seeing here. What if the audience would have preferred Josh, but it just happened to be that Josh and Betty split votes, and because mm -hmm. of that, Kevin gets the vote. Right. If it was a tie vote and that's how Kevin wins, that's terrible. Uh, I hate that they're opening up the possibility for wild things like that to happen. Please don't ever do this to us again. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not a fan of that. I think, like, yeah, I don't even like that in the event of, like, a tie. So, like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I just think it's not a good idea. I don't trust the general public to make the right choice. Luckily they voted, you know, in, in this way, this time didn't like totally screw everything up by being some deciding vote or something. But like, I, I just feel like I, I don't trust anyone enough to vote. I mean, yeah, you can look at like favorite Canada's players. Favorite player. yeah, yeah. I was going to say, you can look at like the fav <laughs> past favorite players mm -hmm. to like understand what's going on here. I mean, I'll say this, Marty not Marty himself, but like people on Marty's behalf and businesses on Marty's behalf were uh, buying ad space to tell people oh to vote for Marty. So there was how much did they spend on, to like, win this 10 K or whatever. I know. It's like, is it really <laughs> that worth it? They were spending, there was ads going up on social media saying vote Marty for Canada's favorite player. So like, and it wasn't just targeted to Big Brother fans. It was targeted to, like, everybody. He had his whole, like, area's um, vote. So I just feel like we can't really take that sort of stuff into account. I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, it's a mess. 
Yeah. I hate the I hate the Canada's vote though. Like the fact that it's all pretty much East Coast Canada is the ones that are going to be voting for Marty. And like I was watching it kind of fast forwarding because I was trying to like get through it because I was like worried I was going to be late. And then I saw that I was like, oh man, come on! Like I knew it was going to happen, but it was a little bit disappointing that some of the actual fan favorites didn't really have a shot here. Mm-hmm. I I mean I've got to tell you I I wanted Betty to win that so bad. <laughs> Like after everything she just went and that's the yeah. thing too, where it's like, I feel like Betty would have had such a better chance to win Canada's favorite if they had been able to watch the finale. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like after you see what just happened to Betty, I feel like so many more people would have been like, all right, please, let's give this to Betty. Um, that's certainly I feel, how I felt. I feel like usually there's like one person that the majority of viewers kind of rallies around and is like the clear like, oh, fan, this is the fan favorite. But this season, I feel like there was a lot of people that a lot of people really enjoyed. Like, I mean, even just like looking at the jury, like, I don't know if I would know who to vote for for fan favorite. There were so many people who gave me like good, fun feeds and good, fun television throughout the season. Um, And even like people that you forget about because you haven't seen them in a long time, like Herman, like you see those jury segments, you see him out there, you're like, I love Herman. How could I forget? <laughs> so, you know, I, I just feel like it, it was not as like cut and dry this time. Um, I'm surprised that they didn't do like a top three or something. I don't know if Canada normally does that, but I do like to hear the top three. So that way, at least we kind of get a general sense. And even if you don't win, you kind of can hear if you're in the top three. And that would be like a nice, like little gift, even though it's not money. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're talking about Kevin winning, uh, but I think we also and, you know, obviously we're talking about the, the Josh decision. Um, this is this is the nightmare, right? For Josh, for Josh and Betty. The nightmare is and this is the thing that always is the thing in the back of your mind that prevents you from making this kind of move. It's the well, the last thing I want to do is cut my friend for the easy win and then also lose, and I just cost us both the win. Um, <clears throat> that is exactly what just happened here tonight. It was painful. Definitely painful. <laughs> and I, was, I just was like, wouldn't you want your friend to win some money as well? Um, I thought that, yeah, it was just the wrong decision, and I felt really, really bad for Betty. Yeah, I think if it was a situation where it was so clear cut that if Josh took Kevin, Josh would absolutely just wipe the floor with him, then I could understand, you know, okay, yeah, you'd love your friend to win if you couldn't win, but you should do the move that makes it so that you are guaranteed to win. And I could get that. But in this situation, I mean, there's no real way to know. It wasn't so clear cut who was going to win. So, you know, I am a little surprised that Josh went for for keeping Kevin and cutting Betty. It just, unless he knows some, unless, you know, maybe Kevin's just been talking to him all week being like, I'm hated. Everyone hates me. Like I haven't done anything. And just, just, you know, harping on that. But, you know, from what we saw, I don't know if, if I'm Josh, if I would be like, oh yeah, I'm absolutely like just smoking Kevin. I, I don't know where he got that from. If that was really his thought, unless he, thought that Kevin played a really good game and wanted to bring him along. I, I honestly, I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, hopefully, hopefully somebody else knows. We've got another beautiful panelist joining us. <laughs> Jacob Jones is here. I miss Hi, you everyone. already. <laughs> I miss you. Everyone looks so gorgeous. Wait, Melissa, did you dress up for the finale? Yes, I did. I always dress up for the finale. Oh my gosh. You look amazing. Like everyone just Thank looks so you. beautiful. Everyone has a glow tonight. Right? <laughs> you oh look great gosh. yourself. Thank you. It's just the lighting. I'm like sweaty from the subway. <laughs> and from, like, walking it just looks like a glow. Listening. Thank you. If you I'm if listening. you were not watching my Twitch stream, uh, I was streaming us all, all watching together. Um, and uh, if you were not watching, if you did watch, then you got to see that um, Kevin uh, not only managed to convince the jury to vote for him, but <laughs> he managed to uh, convert Jacob Jones in the course of one episode from being very anti-Kevin mm-hmm. to, uh, you anti-Kevin. know what, give it up to the guy. Anti-Kevin uh, in the Jacob way of Jones. like who I wanted to win, you know? So not like, oh, Kevin is horrible. I don't want him to win, oh, okay. like ever. But like anti-Kevin about people who I did want to win versus like, okay, Kevin was like on the bottom. But after some certain bullshit yes. happened that night, I was like, you know what, Kevin, go ahead and get it. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You've been yeah. confirmed, conformed. I have. And Taryn was right there to experience it all. Yeah, what was the general vibe of the watch room? Were people was. excited? People were excited. I feel like I mean Taryn, wait, I mean after, it was it was um, a very it was a very mixed room. Yeah. Well, I mean, at a certain point it was like overwhelming. Sorry, like, this, uh, the internet win. here is uh, unfortunate. No, you're it was very fine, much like oh, you're doing fine. Yeah, you're doing amazing, hon. You you're look doing amazing. amazing. You look flawless. Sweetie. Oh my gosh, Taryn, I love you. But I feel like it was it was at the beginning, like when Kevin won that first HOH, you should have seen Taryn's face. He had his mask on. He was like, yes. <clears throat> and then more people were like cheering, you know, he was very vigorously. And then Josh won a second. I was like, yippee, like, you know, thinking one thing was gonna happen. Um, after he did that BS, everyone was like, <gasps> even Taryn's face was like, <gasps> he stood up. And then when Kevin won, everyone was super happy. And so it was like, yeah, if, if people haven't already seen it, Asia posted let, a let video me tell of you, everyone I, watching. So you should guys you should check that out on Twitter because Taryn all of a yes. sudden pops up behind Asia, like <gasps> so yeah, yes. it was a good video. She got she got some good coverage there. I love it. I will say that that yes. first competition um, I, I, was very I might similar. Be frozen. A little bit. No, you're not frozen. Bit. You're not frozen. Lo- You're just a little, a little delayed. No. I think, maybe. I don't know. All I know is that that first you competition, that first competition, <laughs> Taryn just keeps like jumping in when I'm trying to say this one sentence. <laughs> the first competition that I that that they did tonight was so similar to that one they did in BB Can Six, the one that all of a sudden like Paris yes. started winning things. And, um, and then all of a sudden Kevin started winning things here. I was completely shocked. I I honestly was not expecting him to win that. And I think the way that they edited it was really good because it was like, just like you would, they would play the ending music. We got to talk about something. Hold on. Melissa, I love you. Kevin lives underneath Chantel for two years. We've been watching this podcast for two years. We came up. Ten of us are celebrating outside on the lawn. She had no idea. We gave her this gift. Where's the gift? I'm sorry, it's over here. Kevin, Kevin lived under Chantel, and we had no idea until we saw her on the podcast. He's obsessed <laughs> Wait, with every what? single one of you. Melissa, he's obsessed with you. We it's watched Jacob. Same birthday. It's not even co- he he's he does the best Jacob Jones impression of all time. Taryn, he's <laughs> actually your number one fan. Your number world. one fan of all time. We had to, we were watching this live. We waited until he won because of course he was gonna win. We waited until he won. We went like this. Chantel was on the podcast. We came up, knocked on the door, gave her a Kevin Hive shirt. <laughs> Wait. He's going to watch us. He'll be like, shocked. What? All what of, the fuck is happening? All of you guys are absolutely amazing. Massive fans. We've tuned in. We've tuned in every week. Every it's either watching week. the live feeds or watching the Rob we'll as a get podcast out of here. recap. We'll get, out, recap. we'll get out of here. We didn't want to jump in, but we had to let you guys know. That's We're the best amazing. fans. We've Biggest been watching fans. all season. It's been incredible. Kevin Everything is, we know is because of you guys. Evan is obsessed with all of you. All of you. Oh this is insane. Wow. He's the, great, he's the greatest of all time because of you guys. He's the greatest of all time because of everything you've done. I need a mail shirt. I need, that, I need that shirt to mail to Yeah, mail I want that shirt. We can we can we make all of them. We can get you all of them. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. So do y'all, do y'all know Chantel? It's the what did y'all break in? Time and it's it's a full yeah. circle. Is this a break in? Is this a break in? Do we need to call nine one one or the Canadian I, I equivalent? Just got back from New York, but my bag's still there. We, <laughs> we watched the round table and we oh saw you on. God. We were freaking out. Will he come here and yeah. sit oh with me in my house? Hundred percent. He's gonna sit right here. He lived. Right below this floor for I two can't years. This. For two what years, are the odds? This floor. Like Insane. literally, what are the odds? We're that gonna leave crazy. you do it, but we just we needed to come up and say hi. We needed this to come up and say hi. It was nice to meet you guys. Oh my god, Matt. <laughs> Wait, I'm like obsessed. Go <laughs> oh, Kevin! Go oh, Kevin! Oh, thank you. <laughs> this is so crazy. That was so suitable oh, for the finale. Lee! We love you guys. Effing. What the hell is going on? Thank you. <laughs> I love how someone that- in the chat was like, not the home invasion. <laughs> I can't this is so talk funny. right now. Kevin what lived happen? underneath me for the last two years, and I how didn't did- know. And you didn't know this? I didn't know. What are the odds? I'm like shocked. 
And like, I'm like, who, why are they knocking? And I thought they were watching like, like baseball or some sort of like sport. Yeah. And like, and like excuse and like, me, I'm a little busy. <laughs> and so they're like, I know we're watching you right now. And so they came. Do you know them? Give me the, they're my underneath neighbors. <laughs> And like did you know that they know Kevin or that they? No, this is all me finding this all out right now. <laughs> I did, I've lived here for seven years. Oh I've lived here my seven God. Years. That's why your camera was turned off. Because they yeah. were like. Bam, bam, bam. They were knocking on they're the knocking door, on the probably, door. Right? Yeah, because yes. you muted and then turned your camera off. And we were like, oh, I guess like internet problems. And then all of a sudden it's like, do you, do you want to turn it back on? And these guys like pop into the screen. And I was like, what is going on what here? Oh, wow. Happening? Wait, and that's long sleeve. Oh my gosh, I love. <laughs> love, love. And so he's fashion. He said, come and sit and talk to me about like his game. What? Oh my I'm, god. I'm, yeah, if you can get Kevin there, you've got to get him on. You'll no, sit on the couch. That I'm, is amazing. I'm, I'm shocked right now. Like, I'm sorry. This is oh like no, that moment was epic. To be on the pod tonight. That was amazing. That moment was epic. Wow. Okay. Blind sides left and right. Literally. This night is so unpredictable. <laughs> I have no clue what's going on here. That is so funny. Oh that was gosh. great. Fantastic. I love it. And they're probably watching us right now. Reacting to them. Right now. On the podcast. Okay, wow. They Full know circle. they just came home. Like, <laughs> okay. They're like, she's not at RHAP Live anymore. She's at home. We can get in this, there. Uh, oh <laughs> Darren, are you at a loss for words? I, I'm, I've been struggling with the internet for this entire situation. Um... <laughs> We held down. Chantel, the are you okay? Like, did people just break uh, into your house? Yeah, are I, you? I, I just want to make sure. Did, that... you, did you understand what just went down, or did you not get to catch that, Karen? I I heard it. I I couldn't see it. I just okay. I just heard that there were men okay. talking on your line out of out That's of okay. nowhere. So funny. So Taryn. Oh, Taryn. Yeah. Taryn. Just a brief home my invasion. My downstairs neighbors are massive fans of RHAP and been watching all of us mm. all season. They just came and knocked on the door and said they that saw she was on tonight. That I was live. And he said that Kevin has been living underneath me for two years. I live in the same house as Kevin has this whole time. And he's been a fan and watching me up here podcasting that about him. Insane. <laughs> and they Kevin gave knew me you. Oh my gosh. I love what? this. Now I'm going to go look at all the mail that's downstairs and be like, is that, <laughs> wow. <their> mail? <laughs> that is crazy. All right. Oh so gosh. now who's going to pop into each of our homes? Like, do we have that all set up guys? Like this I is can't. all set up. So I'm right now. my person's late, so they haven't come in yet. <laughs> my <laughs> in here. I texted them. I can't. Karen's coming in my room. This is oh my much. god. Yeah, oh Taryn, my. Taryn just comes into Jacob's come on, room. Taryn. <laughs> We're like, wait, what? Jacob, I should have I should have just gone home with you no, because TBA, uh, everyone oh is god, still frozen on my on... screen. So oh no, oh Taryn, Taryn, there's okay. still time. Go run. Run. <laughs> go to Jacob's house. Go to Maggie's house. Go Do you know find, what, find some Wi-Fi. It's also fitting because on my draft, Kevin was the last person I had on my draft too. <laughs> So I did win. Oh. I did win my draft with Kevin as well. Wow! Oh my god! This wow! This is beyond epic. I couldn't have planned it. Like what? This is crazy. What a crazy <sighs> finale! I feel like finales are like I, the last time we had a podcast like this was when I think it was like Jordan Parhar was at someone's finale party where it was like all the Big Brother people were there and people just kept popping in, being like, "Hey, it's me! I wanted to say hi." We were like, mm. "Oh my god, what's going on here?" But yeah, that that's wild. I love that. Whew. Okay. Well, I don't even know got, how to like get back into say, commentary. I, I do, you know. Um, oh, can you? Can you guys? Can you, hopefully, you we guys can, can hear we me. We can hear you. Yeah. Um, I do. I do think. Yes, I do. I do think that. Uh, you know, obviously, those those strange men just said that uh, we can take some ownership of Kevin's win, but I think uh, beyond that. Um, I, I think I can take uh, also more ownership over Kevin's win because the last time that I podcasted a finale from a hotel room um, that uh, Kevin Martin won uh, <laughs> Big Brother Canada. So anytime I, ca I podcast a finale from a hotel room, Kevin, uh, wins. Kevin wins the season. Um, so I think I, I think that says it all, to be honest. You're a, you're a winner, baby. 
You're a winner, baby. It's all it's about all the hotel Jared. Mm -hmm. It's okay. all Jared. It's no, no, it's about me living above him for two years. <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. is crazy. I, st I don't, I honestly, I'm in as much disbelief about that as I am about the Josh decision. I still don't believe that that's true. I don't understand how you could have not ever known that he was that you like uh well, i don't get it but so basically though like how it is it's like it's a it's a huge mansion and every floor is a different apartment so i live on the roof okay so i'm always in the top and like they're on the, the floor right beneath me and it's like a three bedroom place and so there's probably multiple people living there and then there's like another floor with another like apartment that has multiple people living there so there's people coming in and out maybe i've seen him i just didn't know who he was at the time but like well now you will Chantel. It's time. It's time for you to get on Big Brother and also win this. This mm -hmm. building. I have to winning. now. It's a sign. It's a and sign make sure now. Taryn is in a hotel room when you yeah. are in the final two. Chairs, well, her name okay? is Kevin. Change my name to Kevin. You have to change yeah. your name to yeah. Kevin. Yes. But that's fine. Change your name to Kevin. It's there's still time. Literally. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> All right, this let's let's crazy. get back to the finale. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, okay. I didn't know that was happening. No, it was Obviously. fantastic. No, it was I'm great. Shocked. I loved it. That was fantastic. Yes. Oh my god. Oh Random. man. Um. Well, they did bring up an interesting point, right? Uh, that uh, they said they said Kevin is the best of all time. Um, is that something that we should be talking about? Is Kevin? Um, let's, I mean, let's table the U S discussion, right? That's, right. that's even more difficult, but, uh, big brother Canada winners. Um, where does, where does Kevin fall? I, I, I mean, he's number one. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I think he's number one. I, I mean, I, I still am in shock that he won. Cause I honestly like prepared myself for his eviction, like, last week or whatever so i feel like i've been constantly thinking of him as like a fourth place winner or like a fourth place person because i i just did not expect him to win but now that he has i mean i feel like there's it's hard to deny the fact that he's probably number one he controlled the game the entire time without people knowing he was doing anything behind the scenes he constantly was in people's ear i mean i do think that the recap that they played at the beginning was pretty like well done in terms of showing that he was trying to make people think that their decisions were or his decisions were their decisions and i just feel like yeah i don't know i just feel like it's one of the most impressive games for sure and I think that if I, I mean, I kind of, I feel like I have to think of it, think about it more, but I think at this point in time, I would probably say he's number one. I, I would concur with that. I think it's really impressive on how Kevin got out of many situations. Now he led the charge on many situations without anyone knowing. Um, and I think as the, as the game started to, you know, get to the end and I, and I still want to see how he can, like what he did to convince mm -hmm. Josh, we saw a little bit of what he did to convince us at the last bit of, you know, these last few days to kind of, pick him instead of Betty, but he's been working on that for a minute, but just seeing how much he has put in work this entire duration of the game. And he hasn't even mm -hmm. been in the power position to do so. He's right. just taken the game by control and, and done his shit. And he talked his shit in the final two. And that's what I loved about him. And so would I put him number one? Yeah. I mean, for like, just how impressive and strategic and in, 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 in that kind of way, I like more like he was also, I was about to say, I like more theatrical players, but he was all of that. Like, I feel like he was mm -hmm. all of that. He got involved. He wasn't like a very, I'm going to stay quiet. Let me not say nothing. Like he stood up for Helena in different instances that I, I just, Oh, I'm getting amped up. And like, just, I'm getting <laughs> like Kevin, Kevin Jacobs vibes right now. But like I, he, he had, he had every component to an amazing, like and not just an amazing strategic player, but an entertaining player at that. Mm -hmm. And so definitely. Yeah. And, and like, I feel like, like I was gonna say, no, I love go that he kept his promise, you know, like he's delivered what he promised at the beginning of the game. He was going to take out our favorites. He's going to mm -hmm. play the manipulator. He was going to be behind the scenes. He was going to be controlling everybody. And we we're all like, who says that and actually does it and succeeds? And like, I love the fact that he kind of went in with a plan. He decided like, this is how I'm going right. to play the game. He stuck to it. And he had some magic fall into his hands with these, a couple of these evictions that he, he evaded. But I think that what I love about his game the most is that it's the most similar to what I think I would play. I wouldn't necessarily be, you know, the manipulator in that way, but like strategy is more so my, my forte. And so I love that the strategist actually gets the win this time. And so, yeah, I think for me, he's the, he's the best player so far. Yeah. I think to me also, I think 
for for me and i understand yeah. people who think it differently on this this aspect like for me i prefer to see someone who you know isn't in a power position the majority of the game and and is kind of behind the scenes isn't winning comps like has to pull themselves out of tricky situations like that impresses me more than someone who's had it easy the whole game because they've set even if they've set themselves up well to have an easy game to me it's more impressive to see somebody struggle and yet still pull through and still get out of it and still win and the fact that he hasn't won really any competitions in the game isn't really like a negative from my perspective because I think it's like the fact that he still made it without winning competitions that impresses me. And he didn't have a strong alliance who was winning competitions for him. He had people who were pretty weak on his side. I mean, Helena wasn't winning that much. Uh, she won like two vetoes or something. Right. And so I think like the fact that he was still able to make it to the end, um, without having this this big shield in front of him, without winning his himself, I I just think that 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 impresses me the most. Um, so yeah, I loved it. Can I also say one more thing, um, Kevin? Yeah, I, I, I think I, that I, um... <laughs> no, no, Taryn, go, like go, go, Taryn, go, behind, so can... Taryn, go, 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 <laughs> go, Taryn. If if I if I get interrupted, you need to go because it's harder for me to go after. Yes. <laughs> no, just go, go, you go. Go, go, you go. Okay. You. Oh, jeez. <laughs> All right. Well, I think un undeniably that uh, that that Kevin has uh, had the most impressive win that we have seen um, in Big Brother Canada, and honestly, the most impressive win we have seen in all of big brother for uh i i think s since since dan in season 10 i mean uh like it's just it's extraordinary the amount of adversity that he mm -hmm. managed to overcome the fact again the fact that he had ha did not win competitions the fact that he um and and like that's the thing is that like when analyzing kevin as a player you have to factor in the fact that He's not winning competitions, which makes his game a lot harder to play. But the fact that he was able to play it makes it all the more impressive, which I think is going to lead to a lot of interesting analysis as we really dive deep into all of this. I'm sure we'll talk a lot about it in the roundtable uh, when we wrap up the season in the coming weeks. We'll talk about uh, Kevin versus Dane. We'll talk about Kevin versus Dan, uh, which like, uh, I mean, who who has even had that comparison at all, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin versus Dr. Will. I mean, he has, he played a game that is on that level. Um, and it has been a very long time since we have seen that kind of game. Uh, it's, it's, it's very extraordinary. And uh, I'm excited for, you know, all, all of the discussions that we are going to be having here moving forward. Mm hmm Definitely. All right, Jacob, now you go. Um, Taryn took the words <laughs> out of my mouth. <laughs> All right. No, honestly, I agree. And I think that that, I mean, I feel like I have not expected to compare somebody to Dan, like literally ever, because I mm -hmm. thought there's no way we'll find someone else that's like that. And I think he, he played a similar game. It was, it was super strategic, super just just intelligent felt like it was on another level but also fun and also not personal not not like hateful or mean or anything like that it was literally just like fun to watch and you know we always complain that when someone goes in and they're a villain for the most part they think they're a hero when they go in the diary room and act as if like oh what was me i'm a little hero and we hate that and so he absolutely turned that on its head he went in he said i'm gonna be a villain and then he went in the diary room and was like yeah, I'm the villain. I'm going to you know, do what it takes. I don't care. I'm just going to win. And I, th I love that. If you're going to be a villain, fine. Own it, though. And then we'll love you for it. And we've said that over and over again. And I feel like he took that to heart and really ran with it. And it was just just phenomenal. I feel like I can't say enough good things about it. A rootable villain, like a, a very person. Like I think the a good thing that you really said that I haven't even really thought about when we get villains typically in Big Brother and, you know, later seasons in, in certain ways, it's like, oh, I like don't like the person personally, but they played a good game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They make like, you know, sometimes they make personal attacks. They get into all these, you know, combative moments and aren't shown like the best, in, you know, in the best light. But Kevin really kept all that honed in 
and like just really executed his game flawlessly. And that's what I like really commend him about. It's just he, it never got ugly. Um, you mm-hmm. know, even even with the cast and, and he, the fact that he could maintain that villainous character and um, just kind of keep it complete game. It's something to honor, honestly, because we mm-hmm. really don't see that that often. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of people conflate uh, being a yeah. villain with being mean. And I feel like there's there's a difference there because there's like a game villain where it's like, I'm just going to do what it takes to win and I'm going to you know take out your faves or whatever and blah, blah, blah. Um, versus like actually just like being like a mean person and making people feel bad and just turning things really dirty and gross and bad. And like that, that was not the case here at all. And so we were able to have fun with his like villainous, like qualities or whatever in his game without, you know, feeling like bad about it. Like, I don't think this whole season I felt at all that, that, you know, that bad feeling that I sometimes get, especially with big brother us, where it's just like, Ooh, this feels bad and and also like something I don't want to watch or be a part of. So this was a great season. I feel like even everybody in the house, it seems like everyone, you know, is leaving with maybe some hard feelings, but for the most part, like still good relationships with everybody. Um, I mean, maybe summer, I don't know, but you know, for the most part, everyone's kind of leaving on a good note. Everyone still is getting along. And I, and that's what I hope for in this type of game because it is a game. And I would hope that people would kind of recognize that and separate the personal from the game. Oh, we, we can't hear you. You should tell you're muted. Oh, the top row, baby. <laughs> yeah, the top <laughs> row up there. You guys are struggling. High five, Melissa. Um, well, okay, okay. I have I have something just, like, to say, which is that uh I it was it was very it was very entertaining to me um seeing like how much disbelief Kevin was in uh, mm-hmm. as he walked out the door to win the game because it's like it's I I felt that because I still feel that like I still feel like this is not what happened. Um, I really did not think he was going to pull through. And I felt that way from the beginning. I mean, we were giving Kevin and I went through this in the game recaps, but um, right from early on, he was doing a lot, a lot of very impressive things from the very first time that the feeds turned on. And yet we were giving him mediocre ratings for a while because we were just like there's no way there's Mm -hmm. no way he can be as good as he wants there is no way this archetype is going to be able to succeed at this style of game we've never really seen it before ever and the fact that he's not going to be able to win end game competitions the fact that like he we like that was a problem he had no like structure around him. There was a structure in the game that he had to overcome before he could even start playing the game. Um, then even if he did somehow manage to play this game all the way through, how in the world is the jury ever going to see it and recognize it? That was another massive hurdle that we talked about for a long time that the, he, the jury's not going to recognize. He's going to get there with somebody like Josh and they're going to give it to Josh in a landslide. Um, and every step of the way, he managed to over overcome our expectations every single time. And even all the way down to the end, I I really was like, okay, at this point, it's finally his 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 the what he's able to do, what he is capable of, he has finally reached the limit. And every single time he managed to step over that limit. And you can see it in his own face that even he is surprised at his success as Aris is telling him, You just played the most dominant game we've ever seen. And he's just like, Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, <laughs> what are you what are you talking about? Did that just happen? Mm-hmm. And I hopefully you can hear me now. It just yeah. jumped onto another yeah. mic for whatever reason. So what I was saying though is what I really love about his game as well is that he's been intentional. He everything that he was doing had a purpose. It had a reason. He's having conversations to push forward some certain agenda for a particular reason. And I love that he really for the most part, didn't stop. He was always doing something that was going to be benefiting him later on. And I think that that's what I found a lot of fun watching the season is like, okay, what is Kevin going to do? How is he going to get himself out of this situation? What is he going to say to certain people to kind of shift the game into his direction? And so that's what's been most fascinating for me watching his game. And that I think that I enjoyed a lot about it as well. 
Mm-hmm. Also, we so we see so many super fans flop on the on the show, yes. like U.S. versions and you know Canadian versions. And so having Kevin, who is a uber su- like we we have super fans that like watch the feeds, but like listens to the podcast, engages in the podcast, jumps on. You know what I mean? Like to see that to see it. Like damn, Kevin. <laughs> Damn, I'm just like, hey, giving super fans a, a good name out there. Yeah. I mean, I absolutely thought Kevin was going to flop start from the start just because yep. for the most part, that's what we see. And especially if somebody says, I'm going to go in there and be the mastermind, I'm a super fan. I'd be like, yeah, no, you're not. And this, mm-hmm. you're, you're going to be kicked out right away. There's no way this guy's lasting. I mean, we like, I mean, we waited a while to draft him and then Rob snatched him up and like I thought he was probably going to end up being audience choice because I was like because his intro packages were just so outrageous um but then you know we had his friend Matthew I believe saying like I know him like he is not he's not like this he's playing it up he's going to be different in the house like he wanted to get cast and this is what's going on and and that's what we ended up seeing really I mean he still had that like I'm going to be a mastermind type vibe but not so outrageous where he was like I don't get along with people. I'm going to be the villain. Like he wasn't doing that in the house. He, he was doing it in the DR maybe, but not in the house. So very good pivot there. Pivot. (laughs) Yeah. It's interesting to, to think about. um, (laughs) uh, It's interesting to also to think about, like, you know, we talked about the, when we thought that Kevin was gone, uh, we talked about the mistake of keeping Josh over Jace mm-hmm. and how, you know, what a, what a terrible decision that was. Now, uh, to some degree, I was always, you know, on the cam- in the camp of like it was less so the actual decision and more the indecision that I found uh, the big uh, to be the big mistake. Um, but uh, ultimately, I, you know. I think that when we look back at it, it's not as big a mistake considering the fact that his read ultimately turns out to be correct. And he is able to convince Josh to bring him to the end in a spot where he absolutely should not have. Um, and, uh, and, and it is, it is a situation where like, you know, we, I think it's, it's interesting. We have to go back and we have to sort of like reevaluate some of these uh, decisions. So, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> I've got dogs back here. Chantel's I just have voice. to pause. I just have to pause after I speak because because <laughs> no, I, I thought you were going to continue. I was like, Wait. I don't know how <laughs> long the delay is. Um, so you 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 just have to you just have to pick it up at some point. Um, yeah. But okay, here's the next here's the next topic for me at least. Um, we've talked about we've talked about Kevin as a winner, but um, what about this season, right? Uh, for, for a long time, we have considered big brother 10 to be the pinnacle of what we have seen from big brother, uh, at the very least, like, you know, one of the best seasons of all time. Uh, I joked before the season, like, look, Hey, maybe 10 seasons are very good. Hopefully we'll get a good one here with big brother Canada 10. Um, every step of the way this season has delivered every single week. There has been some element of, uh, the week that has not only, you know, passed the test of not being boring or, you know, straightforward or whatever, but like every single week has had at least one like very exciting moment. Most of them, multiple very exciting moments, extreme gameplay happening all over the place, everybody playing the game, lots of fluid strategic maneuverings going on. Uh, no massive structure that is just chopping piece by piece down the rest of the game, even all the way to the final five and then the final four and then the final three decisions, all ridiculously uh, surprising and entertaining every step of the way. Um, For me, this, this is the big brother 10 of, of Canada. It is easily the best big brother Canada season. Um, And I think it is, in the conversation, like Kevin, to be up there with the best of all Big Brother seasons. Yeah, damn, that was that was big, and I, I, I definitely the best I can, in Canada. Yeah, I, I definitely concur, and even to like a small point, even with live feeds, like at certain points in like the season when it gets later on, like the feeds are like really boring. Like we kind of know what's going to happen towards the end of the game. Conversations kind of cease in certain aspects, but with this season, the feeds. 
I feel as though kind of got more intense as the season, you know, went on. And I was like tuned in, like, okay, what's exactly gonna happen? I feel like it's a testament to the players that we had ready to play this season. And it's like and ready to make moves and weren't like and we're I mean, we weren't afraid when we saw Josh make it weren't make a not afraid move up to the very last second. Um and we just had pl- like good or bad, but we have players willing to do to shake to shake shit up basically. And that's what I really appreciated with this guys. Yeah, like, not a boring yeah, Mm-mm. agreed. And I think like the ratings on the, you know, the stock watch are very telling. Every week they were consistently high and we never get that um, in terms of like people's enjoyment of the season, not necessarily in terms of the players, but <laughs> like the enjoyment of the season was super high. Enjoyment of the feeds was super high every week. Um, I think that's definitely, you know, it, it shows that the season itself all throughout was very fun. Um I think like even like the boring week was still entertaining. So um, then the fact that it's just like one boring week, I feel like that's a pretty good result. I think for me, um, it's certainly top tier for sure. Um, I would have to like look more into it to know, like to really decide if it's number one, because I just, I loved BB can six so much because Mm. I just felt like there were so many strong players that like were very impressive to watch. Um, but I do think that this season, um, was very fantastic, um, and had a fun result. <laughs> yeah, no, d- definitely. I would like most seasons at the end of the this, this season, I don't watch the feeds anymore. And I'm like, Oh, I don't care about what's going to happen. Just maybe watch the episodes really become a casual, but I was still engaged up to date on Twitter, like, every, like for the whole season and that's never happened before in the last at least 10 years and so it was really nice to have a season to watch that i was engaged the whole time i never really knew what was going on i i, I thought like kevin there was no way kevin was going to win you know what i mean like, i already decided that I, I thought that i knew that the answer and that wasn't going to happen and even that i didn't even get my like to, i wasn't even right about that it was just so unpredictable and in a good way so I think it's a top, top. I think it's the top candidate season for sure. And even with entertainment value, I'm always like a person when I watch reality TV, it's so ratchet. It's so disgusting. But I'm like, please fight. Like, please, like, call call that person, like, any other name other than a child of God. Like, please go there. But even though we, like, we got sometimes, like, that moment, but it wasn't to that degree. (laughs) Like, we got, like, so much, like, emotional pull and, like, just, like, betrayal and not even, like, to lashing out on someone. But just, like, the whole betrayal was, like, entertaining. The crying was entertaining. Like, the the, the, the dancing – on a block was entertaining it was like stupid fun epic fun tragic fun but just a fun damn season 10 10 out of 10 big brother 10 10 out of 10 <laughs> there it is yes and and the editing all season long uh for one of mm. the first times in big brother canada history uh very accurate very on point um this is a, this is this is a legacy season for the show i mean this is something that they this is this is in my eyes their their masterpiece like this is their masterwork mm-hmm. they should be so proud of the product they put together this season so much passion clearly went into it they really it was a tough season to mm-hmm. edit and they really got in there and did their absolute best to follow everything going around. And you can tell too, even in the recap, they're like, we had trouble following this. It was like, I know, right? Like we all, we all get it. Um, And it's like, and, but you actually put in the effort and, and it really, really mattered because people will be able to go back and watch this season with the episodes and get what this season is about. Um, yeah. And that's so huge. And uh, I I can only imagine that, uh, that Arissa is a massive uh, part of what has made both this season and last season so great. Um, and uh, the competitions were much more equitable throughout the season. Um, I still, I still feel like uh, maybe not perfect, uh, especially toward the end here. But um, I do think it helped ex- an extraordinary to an extraordinary amount that um, we got a lot of different competition winners throughout most of the early portion of the season. Um, the casting, as usual, is so so good this season, um, and they just they put together such an excellent product this this year I, I'm, I'm so happy and and like i said i think they should be really really proud of uh of, of what they did 
Yeah. And I like speaking of the competitions, I loved that sewer competition. I thought it looked amazing. And I thought that the um, the coin stacking competition looked amazing as well. I They just look so epic. It's such like a production. I mean, when you when they crawled through that thing and then came out in the sewer and then there was like the, the steam stacks, like and smoke was everywhere. I mean, that was just amazing. I thought it looked like a movie set. I mean, the way that they did it was just fantastic. And um, so very impressive. And I absolutely agree. The editing was on point this year. If you didn't watch feeds and you didn't watch live or anything like that, and then you just came back and watched the episodes later on, you would absolutely understand what the season's about. And you'd absolutely get the same feeling that we all got while watching it, even while we were watching feeds um, versus, you know, like we, I just talked about BB can six. I do not believe that if I watch BB can six episodes, I would put it in the same tier at all as BB can 10. So I think that like, Live feeds were great for BB Can 6, not so much the episodes because they didn't really track and or show any of the gameplay that we saw. Um, this one, on the other hand, completely different. I thought they did such a fantastic job. They really cared about it. And, it, and I think like all of production really cared about this season in particular, and I just felt it showed. Also, though, with like in terms of the editing, the, even like the recap at the beginning of this finale episode, I thought I'm like, yeah, this is pretty good. They're yeah. on point here with what went on. I'm like, okay, yes, they really pieced it together really well, even in yeah. that three minute clip. Um, mm -hmm. And it shows that either maybe people that are are doing the editing, they are more of a fan of the show and they really want to tell the story. But whatever's changed, like it's it's very really fun. And I think that's also probably contributing to why we enjoy the season so much is that they're showing the story, and so we can get behind people and we can be rooting for people. And if we're not seeing the full story, it's kind of hard to be really supportive. So yes, the editing it has to have a big check mark beside it because it was awesome. Yeah, that that recap it, it felt to me like uh, like when I was watching it, I was like, yeah, this is a uh, this is like uh, this is like a more condensed version of what I just did for the last week of my life, <laughs> um, and I and I really like it, you know, like uh, I wish I wish my recaps could be like uh, four minutes per player. <laughs> um, but, um, but they were very good. And I think they were very representative of the games that we played, uh, in the season. So, uh, I enjoyed, I enjoyed that for sure. I also think they did a good job in that recap showing why each player should win. You know, like, I feel like I watched that recap where they showed how each player's game, each of the three players game kind of like went um throughout the whole season and then it's like okay here's the final three a and after watching that i was like yeah i could see each of them winning i thought i thought they did a really good job building each of them up and i and you know no matter who had won in the end i think that like i would have felt like they deserved it in one way or another obviously i think kevin is a top tier player but i do think that the other two like were deserving as well so um you know as much as whatever deserving means but you know i thought that they played decent games and i thought that that um, that recap really did a good job of making me feel that way. I feel like we keep waiting for Taryn and we're just yeah. like, is so, he gonna um, talk? so here we are. <laughs> I did it again. Yes. <laughs> it's just like a three second I, uh, delay. I apologize. Hopefully, hopefully this is, um, this is one of those podcasts. Hopefully this is one of these podcasts that you can appreciate. Uh, after the fact for how messy it's it epic. is. Uh, and it's you all, don't it's just think so it's an epic. utter disaster. Um, <laughs> well, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to uh, introduce the next topic for us. And then and then you guys are going to talk for as long as you can. And in the, and, and I'm going to try to to switch to my phone data, even though I don't have a great signal, and see if that is any better. Um, it probably won't be, but I'm going to make an attempt here to, uh, to switch something up. Um, but... Uh, something else that you know that I would like to talk about. Obviously, um, we saw the, uh, the the jury. We saw Helena come out. Um, we saw Betty come out. Uh, I mean, how do we feel about like where are we placing the cast overall in terms of like on on the level of like you know Big Brother ten to you know, say a. Uh, Big Brother 19, you know, uh, what kind of what like how do we feel about this cast as a whole uh, as as players, as characters, uh, the whole the whole thing of it here? 
Um, for me, I really, I really enjoyed this cast. I loved all the personalities. Um, I thought that it was some unique perspectives that we hadn't seen yet. And so I thought it was really great with that. I wouldn't have minded maybe some more people that were game familiar just to like, you know, have a little bit more elements of people strategizing and maybe a little bit more of an opposition for Kevin here. Cause Herman pretty much was his biggest opposition that he had to kind of go against. And like, there would be, would be cool if there's a couple more people that are a little bit more strategic like that. But on a whole, I definitely think it's better than season 19. Like, is there, like I just, I didn't enjoy season 19 at all. And so I think that this cast was great, but I wouldn't have minded if a couple more people were a little bit more game savvy. Yeah. I, um, I, I really love this cast. I think for for a multitude of factors, I think one of the um, factors that really come to my mind, just like just speaking right now, is the fact that we had um, two non-binary people on this cast. And as a person covering, you know, this season and even watching this season, you know, um, it like challenged me and like just like making like making sure I'm on like my P's and Q's with with pronouns. And I feel like and people even people watching that probably, you know, haven't never met a non-binary person before. Um, so I really love that, that it just had that reach um, just beyond game. And um, we see what we see what um, Big Brother Canada has been doing with like BIPOC and, um, ex and et cetera. But just the the amount of whether you can, they can be dumb moves smart moves, big moves, small moves, just how people were ready to play and ready to do something. Um, even though it may be the dumbest shit that they've ever done, but it, it was just wanting to do something. And I just love that factor of, of not being complacent. Um, I love the fluidity of it. I love the fact that Chow, you should you should be trusting your number one ally, but you're gonna evict them instead. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, oh, wow. We've we we've never, you know, that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's, it was just, it was just so intriguing the stupidity of it all, but also the, the mastermindness of it all as well. And so I think overall, the cast of Big Brother 10 literally checks off every check mark. Um, I think I think this cast is definitely in top uh, six, five, top, top six, five. Well, I don't want to count the all stars or like the people when they come back. I don't want well, I, I feel like I can lump Big Brother 5 in that. Honestly, top five, top five for me. There you go. Um, how do we feel about? Uh, how, am I am I better? Am I a little better? Oh, yeah, you are good. Taryn. Great. Okay. I am like, you right. are like, like, you are oh. like, oh, I should have I should have been on this juice from the start. Oh, uh, the juice. all right. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, I uh, how about Josh? I mean, like, how, like this is obviously again big episode for Kevin. Big episode for the season. Um. I mean, Josh making this call. I think there are a couple things we need to learn, right? Would Josh have beaten Betty is a huge thing that we need to figure out, right? Uh, would the jury have voted for uh, for Josh over Betty or would they have voted for Betty over Josh? Was Josh in a no-win situation? Or did Josh just make perhaps the worst decision we've ever seen in Big Brother when it comes to a Final Three decision? Um, you know, obviously... Uh, Paul makes a very bad decision. Obviously, uh, um, uh, uh, Cody makes a very bad decision. But at least with Cody, it was like he was picking his friend over the easy <laughs> Um At least he got something out of it, right? Um, so are we going to look at this as perhaps one of the worst decisions of all time? I think we need to figure out again if Betty could have uh, beaten Josh. And then I think we also have to um, figure out like where, where do we fall on Josh's game overall? Because for a long time, it felt like he was doing pretty well. And then we get down to the end here and it just seems like to some degree it was mistake after mistake uh with like maybe one you know glimpse of light here when he uh convinces kevin and helena that he's going to throw that hoh but even that had to be prompted by uh by betty so uh how do we feel about about josh now I don't think that Josh would have won against Betty. Now that I see how the, the jurors were really feeling, I think that they were just like, 
they just didn't respect his game at all. And if he, she was up against Betty, he was up against Betty. We heard even Marty was saying like, Betty fought to be here. She won when she needed to. She was able to survive the block five times. And yes, Josh has a similar stat, but he also made so many more enemies. And I think that people would have been rooting for the underdog story in Betty over how they felt about, about Josh. I don't think that he would he was going to win, unfortunately. I don't know. It's that's a it's a tough one for me to answer because we see the reaction from the jury when Betty comes out, but also when the jury segment was happening, I I I feel as though people weren't singing Betty's praises in the jury segment, like when they were doing the round table. And I was honestly expecting a lot more um, of like, oh, I've worked close with Betty. I know what she has done. Like some are kind of vaguely was like, well, I don't know if she, we were friends on a personal level, but really didn't equate it to like the game and how that relationship kind of worked. And so do they just hate Josh, dislike Josh that much where they would have given given the vote to Betty? Um, and not saying I think Betty is a deserving winner, but I just in, in the jury time, I just didn't hear them saying like, oh, this is reason why she played a good game or this is reason why we want to vote for that many. But and I feel like they had definitely had negative feelings towards Josh, but I feel like that could have been um, like, oh, well, we have negative feelings, but like we know more of your game and we've seen more of your game than Betty. And so we, we will vote for you based off of that. Do I think that he made the wrong decision? Absolutely. I don't want to neglect all Josh has done based off of this one effort. I'm going to do it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm tanking Josh's game based off of the, the final decision that he just did. I didn't want to, but as I'm talking about it, I'm like, yo, you effed up bad. Like you, you, even you, you, I would rather get a couple of votes than a nine zero vote any day. Like if no votes. I'm I'm going to go cry. Like I I'm sad if I get some. I'm like okay. I had some friends, and so I feel like he could have had something, but he just chose nothing. And you know, it's we did get Betty's crime. vote, but that's one. Vote. Oh, did he? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought I thought it was nine zero. But Never even mind. so, but he, but even so, I would rather a good five four or a good you know give me something mm -hmm. more than one. But yeah, so. Uh. Yeah, he he effed up. He he uh, the, he. I liked him before. After he did that BS, I'm like, nah, homie. It's sad, but I have to do well, it. Already, it all went downhill from the triple eviction because right. that as soon as he yes. started making those decisions, I was like, whoa, what's this guy doing? Like he's ruining his game here. And I think I uh, wonder if he would have done better had, or I yeah, I don't know. I wonder if he hadn't won that triple H O H how his game would have gone because I do feel like that was the turning point because he just basically threw his allies under the bus, put them on the block and then proceeded to keep doing that the rest of the time. So I, I feel like if he didn't win that HOH, like maybe he wouldn't have pissed people off so much. Maybe there wouldn't be a better jury. You know, I mean, I think the the reason why people were bitter in the end was because they were like, wait a second, we were all in an alliance with Josh. We all thought Josh was this nice guy. Turns out he wasn't. And, you know, I feel like it all turned at the triple. I think if someone else had gotten, you know, Summer or Betty, or if he was a vote to get them out, but wasn't the cause of them leaving, not Betty, but, you know, Summer um, in the triple. Like, I, I think that that might have been better for him moving forward. I mean, and then for him to cut Betty in the end, it's just, it kind of adds to the narrative of like, oh, this guy is ruthless and he literally cuts all his friends like what's he thinking what's he doing and there's really no like good logic behind it um in turn like enough he's not explaining himself enough uh to to get them to understand his perspective or like you know you got to do that classic thing where it's like i'm so sorry like before you do it you say i'm sorry but like i wouldn't be able to win against you like, you're too good you know you use that line and then that at least gets people like oh you're right. I am mm -hmm. too good. It just feeds, it feeds into their ego, makes them think like, yeah, you know what? He's, he loves me as a person, but as a game player, I'm too big of a threat. Instead, he, he puts them on the block and then tells them like, oh, whoops. Like he doesn't even like talk with them about it. It's just like after the fact, he tries to justify it, but like you need to do that beforehand. You can't just blindside people like that. So yeah, not, not super great in terms of uh, moves for Josh, for sure. Yeah. And that, yep. that was my big takeaway from last night as well, which is that um, when Kevin makes the big push for Josh to keep both him and Helena, um, Kevin is saying, Josh, you lose to Betty. You beat me and Helena. It's an obvious decision. Don't make the emotional decision. You beat us. You know that. And Josh goes, yeah, yeah, I do beat, I do beat you. Um, like, yeah, it's an emotional decision. 
It's like, no, what are you doing? That, like, why would you say that? Of course, Helena's going to leave the game being like, screw Josh. Uh, like, he made an emotional decision. He's not thinking about game. It's so much easier to get over a strategic move than one where it's explicitly said, yeah, that was personal. Mm -hmm. I liked her better than you. Uh, yeah. Like, that's rough by itself. And also, it's strategically inept. It's like, yeah, I'm not thinking strategically. <laughs> I'm cutting right. you uh, because that's just like the way that it goes. Of Like the move is to say when Kevin says, look, you know, you beat both of us. Josh should go. No, Kevin, come on. I've mm -hmm. played with you for so long. You know how amazing you are at this game. And I love that you're trying to do this to me right now because I love the game that you have played. But that's why I have to evict you and or Helena, uh, because you are that good. And you had convinced me for so long that you would not win this game. But I think if you sit in those two chairs, you will win unanimously and be the best winner of all time. You'd maybe don't have to go that far, even though in this case it might actually be true. Um, <laughs> but you you give them the compliment on their way out the door. You say this is a strategic move. It has nothing yeah. to do with what is personal. And you make them feel good about how well they played up until that point. It's exactly what Kevin did to almost every single person he sent mm -hmm. out the door. When Herman asks him a question, he tells Herman, he gives Herman exactly what Herman wants, which mm -hmm. is the truth too. Dude, you were right. the only person that saw through me, man. You were my biggest competition. And he was, and he gives Herman that respect. And that's why Herman is sitting there watching him do his speech, like cheering him on because like, mm -hmm. yeah, man, he got me and he knows it and I know it. Um, and it's like, that's, it, it's, that's how you need to do it. You can't just be like, no, yeah, I know I beat you, but I'm going to send you out anyway. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, who who knows if he would have won against Betty, but he would have had more of a fighting chance. But also something that um, like frustrates me is anytime Josh did make a move like that, it was in, in his response to them, I felt as though it was, well, I did that, but like, feel bad for me. Like, I, I sorry. Right. I'm kind it was of, hard I'm kind for of the, me. Yeah, it was like, feel bad for me. And like, if you're going to make those in a lot of sense of the word, like, you know, if good game wise, bad game wise, but like hard, you know, decisions of like backstabbing two of your closest people. I feel like to us, to the audience also, but also to them, you need to just own it. Um, and like, mm -hmm. that's just something I just never saw him do. I feel like he oftentimes went into this um like victim type mentality of like I'll, I you want to you want me to be the I'm not the bad I'm trying not to be the bad guy like I had to, like it's just like nah like own it do it deliver it if you mess up you mess up but it's like your move this is your game and I feel like that would have articulated better in his final speech and right. in his jury question which I thought he did a horrible job at um, conveying his point and um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the oh. big difference between the two of them is like Kevin owned his moves. He said, this is pure strategy. Like you were really good. And just basically like explained it from a game perspective. Whereas like, I think you're right. Josh was more about like, I'm so sorry to do this to you. Mm -hmm. And it was like, he never really fully justified it as like a game move. He just would just be like, this is really hard for me too. And it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, but why are you doing it though? Mm -hmm. Like it just, it never, he never really like, like justified it from a game perspective. And I think that that really was the difference between him and Kevin. Kevin would make these hard decisions. He'd kick out people who he was aligned with. And yet then he would go in their goodbye message or whatever, or even prior to that, explain to them like, look, you have to go. Like you, you're too good. I can't beat you. I mean that, that goodbye message to uh, JL, like, like, I mean, that was very, that was amazing. I mean, and then you compare it to Helena's and you're like, oh, okay, that's the way not to do it versus the way to do it. So, you know, that's, you gotta, you gotta say that stuff, even maybe if you don't believe it, even if it's not true, like you have to make people feel good on the way out. You don't want to make them feel bad. Literally. And also like for the whole season, Josh didn't have any power. He was always just able to be likable, have people want to keep him in the game. He was a number to vote when he wasn't on the block or whatnot. And then as soon as he gets power, he kind of actually just tanked all the relationships <laughs> that he'd been garnering for the last two months. And so I think that he probably would have had a better chance winning the game, actually just being a completely social player similar to his summer because the fact that he got some power and he had to like break these friendships and like hurt these people so badly i think that that was really how his game fell apart mm -hmm. yeah and uh man the as as jacob mentioned the, the speeches were night and day i mean mm -hmm. uh like this is clearly the new meta right like you give an impassioned speech to fire up the jury ironically 
this starts with Kevin Martin back in season five. Uh, you you give that like fired up, uh, like this is me, this is what I did, and I'm so excited to be here. Uh, kind of speech. It, it starts with Kevin Martin. Paris and Kayla, you know, uh, perfect mm -hmm. the art. Um, this is how you this is how you give a speech in a final two. And the fact that the U.S. hasn't caught on yet, they don't know what they're missing because anybody can anybody can get into one of these final two shows. And if they're the only person making a speech like this, I think they could genuinely win some votes because it's very impressive and it really seems to be to to work very well. Um, and and poor Josh is just like. Um, so I, I won some competitions. Uh, I was on the block mm -hmm. four times, which was more than anyone else. And it was just <laughs> like, this is old news, Josh. Yeah, yeah it's not <laughs> no. giving him any new information. I'm surprised he didn't reveal that he was a doctor in his speech. Or it'd be like, Those I was Those reveals do, new. yeah. Yeah, like, I don't know. I was surprised he didn't mention that. I feel like that would have been a selling point. Like, yeah, I've been playing you the whole time. You know, like you had no idea, but I had this game, you know, I already was playing you from the start. Um, and he didn't he didn't really use that. And I felt like that could have been a good selling point. I think it definitely could have. And as much as um, we can like depict um, his game, because that's what we're here to do. And, it, you know, it, in the end, it was, you know, a shit fest. I think he did contribute to a lot of entertaining, hilarious, theatrical, shitty gameplays. But it, it made the season what it is, you know. And mm -hmm. so, Josh, thank you for the <laughs> blunder that you gave us. Um, you seem very nice, very lovely, but like, thank you for the chaos element mm -hmm. of it as well. Good or bad, right. but like you added, you definitely, you yourself added to the season and made it kind of what it is. I mean, how, how fun was it though? Uh, I, as per usual, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure there's a, uh, an infamous clip, um, of, of our podcast on a finale night where, uh, I am talking about, uh, the terrible thing that finales tend to do to me where they get me all excited and then, uh, ruin everything with these clip, uh, montages. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I, I'm not a fan normally of, uh, of them. I liked the secrets bit though. And especially because it ends in the reveal, the reveals are always fun. I don't know why we then included a showman's montage to cap off the night. <laughs> uh, I felt like that was a little strange, um, mm. but uh, but I did enjoy the reveal that Josh is a doctor. And then even more fun was the lead up oh, to funny. Kevin's not really married, which very much had them thinking that Jillian was not a real person. For, <laughs> like they were like, oh, my God, she's not real. At least and she's then they real. Said, oh, she's, <laughs> oh, she's real. She's real. They're just not married. OK. Oh, yeah. I also, but but they also again. I don't understand why they made the cup out the make out session um, montage, but also the pre jury montages of each pre jury and the clips of them coming in and leaving. I feel like that was like hashtag team too much on that on that one as well. I mean, I look, I love I love giving space to the pre jurors. I love that we got to talk to them. Um, I agree, though, the montages of them. You know, it was it was a little little old news. Uh, yeah. Sorry, preachers. I I, I I like them, and like I said, I'm so glad that they got to like uh, they all got to talk. I love. I mean, again, just like it's the little things like that that like you can tell. And again, they they're not doing everything perfect, but little things like that where they're they're making sure that each preacher has a chance to to speak at the finale that I really that enjoy uh, that they're doing. Um, I, we're we're almost an hour and a half into this podcast and we haven't complained yet about the jury questioning format. Um, just need to make good. sure we get it in there. We still don't like the jury questioning format. We want it to go back to non-live. You're look, but some sometimes you know a broken clock is right every once in a while. So uh, like two times a day or something like that. <laughs> Something like that. One one time every ten seasons, maybe. But uh, I honestly, so. I don't get that. I don't get that analogy. But I, you'll talk to me about that after. I have to look it up. I never, <laughs> I never, I never understood it. Honestly, I will I, say, I, never did. I don't love the jury questioning as much. I feel like the the jury questioning it's too it's too brief. Like I want to just have more of a dialogue. Yes, yes. But this is way better than BBUS because this one they at least got to like share something with them. Like, I mean, Summer was able to communicate her feelings um, and they were able to ask personal questions. Like, you know, not totally personal. Obviously it's not as good as we, we would love, but you know, much better than BBUS when they take an index card, they don't know what they're going to ask. They give them some random card and they just have to read off of it. This one, at least they were able to kind of say like, 
some initial thought to the person. Like Summer clearly was not thrilled. So um, I, I thought that was at least better than BBUS. Not as amazing as it could be, but you know, I, I'll take what I can get at this point. Yeah. Um, I also want to make sure that we talk about Betty uh, because I mentioned this in the uh, in the Betty game recap uh, toward the end that if she did not win the game, which she may have been very close, um, that her, I, I thought her game was going to be underrated, um, you know, in, in, in the history of what we see uh, overshadowed, perhaps, is uh, is another thing that we will I think maybe see because obviously Kevin did such a great job here. But I want to make sure that we dedicate some space here to Betty because I think she played uh, a much better game than people uh, are likely going to give her credit for. I think that, um, and I, again, I mentioned this in her game recap, but she was much more active than I think a lot of people remember. Um, and looking back at it, it, I mean, it is, it's Kevin standing in her way almost every step of the way. Um, and, and not only that, but she knew it somewhere inside of her. She knew that it was Kevin getting in her way and she was like, I do hate you, Kevin. You're a terrible person. You're ruining my game. Um, yeah. All the way back to when Marty was HOH and he was going to put Kevin on the block. And Kevin put in a lot of work to make sure it wasn't him. And who does it fall on instead? Betty. Betty ends up replacing Kevin in that spot that Kevin was supposed to have that spot. He puts Betty there instead. And she ends up running into a wall over and over, mostly due to the work of Kevin. And then when she really starts to come into power, really starts to come into the game, it's again, Kevin winning Josh over that ruins it. Josh is spilling all the tea to Kevin, preventing Betty from making the power moves that she's trying to make. Um, and then even she finally gets Josh back on board and she is just a smidge away from potentially winning the whole game. And one more time, Kevin is able to swoop in and steal Josh back from her, um, not emotionally, but strategically to take Kevin over, uh, over Betty. And, um, and so I like, I want to make sure that, that we credit Betty for the game that she played and the fact that it, like, to me, it reminds me a little bit of Brittany in season 14, where it's like, uh, if not for Kevin, a.k.a. the tan of the season, yeah. just mm -hmm. screwing her up, I really feel like Betty has a much more successful game. And even with Kevin there, she came very close. Um, and I and I want that to be remembered. I love that. Oh, like that was so sweet. I yeah, sorry I interrupted with my question to Dennis. <laughs> I was on mute. <laughs> I was like, I know, I say, I'm just going to really quick ask. And then I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> You no, know, I think like Betty, Betty was a freaking delight. I feel like this season, I feel she brought so much. Um, oh, someone's knocking on Chantel's door again. I'm worried about um, Chantel invasion, again. Invasion, invasion, <laughs> oh, of the, no. invasion of the bros. This, is, this um, whole podcast has been like one thing after another. Like literally. it's like me, the dogs talking to Dennis, the home invasion, Taryn's internet. Jake I've been stable. In. Well, you did come mm. in late. Oh, I did. I had <laughs> you to did like interest. pop in, yeah. Well, yeah, of course. So that of makes course. Sense. Uh, <laughs> but I, I mean, Betty, she, she was, uh, she was grinding almost every week or had to and even at the beginning of the game like I didn't see Betty making it this far. I think a lot of people could say the same thing just because of like that the architect of like oh i'm going to be brutally honest with you i'm going to tell you exactly how I feel like at times that's like oh how can you actually win the game like that um and she was that but she was also i feel like a very strategic and very behind the scenes on some stuff and knew when to tap in and she did that very very well and she was a uh, I would classify her as like an underdog, at, you know, in the later, and she beasted out on the comps for the most part, honestly, in my opinion. Impressed me with that. Impressed me with, well, I rather, you know, she didn't get rid of JL, but, you know, that's like, you can't get everything you want. But it, I don't know. She was just fine. I was rooting for her and I wanted her to win. She, again, I think she is underrated. And I think all three of these, I would have been happy with any three, you know, mm -hmm. well, Betty at a certain point I would have been happy with all three but at another certain point I just would have been happy with you know two and then one um but yeah I love Betty yeah I think so like everything I, okay I, there Chantel yeah, yeah no more emergencies house. <laughs> no no just like been drinking so much water to try to help my voice and I'm like I gotta go to the bathroom. oh my god this whole podcast has just been like one thing after another <laughs>
<laughs> I was like, I gotta go. I gotta go. I hope sorry. Rob isn't watching well, us. Sorry, sorry for really pointing it out there. Then. Yeah. Sarah's <laughs> like, okay, everybody, let's see I what Chantel is up to. <laughs> Sorry. What a mess. Oh Rob, turn this off. Don't be watching no, this. Literally. <laughs> Don't fire us, please. No. <laughs> we haven't lost our minds, please. Oh, oh boy. Um, what about uh, that roundtable? Uh, Kiefer comes in. Kiefer's yeah. going to host the roundtable this season. Uh, I, I liked Kiefer here. Yeah, I was surprised. I wasn't expecting it. I always love when they bring in a past person and kind of have them lead the way um i i wish that like i honestly wish we could see and i say this all the time i wish we could see more of that jury roundtable i know it doesn't mean anything but i love seeing them talk about their feelings on each of the players and i also love when they challenge each other i feel like maybe this one it seemed like everyone was on the same page for each player so maybe that's why they didn't have that much content but a lot of the times you'll see someone be like actually i think he played a really great game well you know don't you remember this thing and, like they kind of go at each other a little bit in terms of trying to it's like a you know 12 angry men type situation where the, <laughs> someone's trying to persuade everyone else about someone else's gameplay um so i was hoping to see more of that but i guess if they're all on the same page there's really not that much to talk about uh besides just saying the same things so you know i i did appreciate it i always love the jury roundtable stuff um and i thought keeper did a good job so do you think next year it will be kevin for sure that leads that well so here's he no, here's the that. thing right like last year it was Anthony, right? Um, mm -hmm. And they didn't have Canada's favorite then. I think they just picked Anthony because let's be real. Um, <laughs> this season, it's it's Kiefer, Canada's favorite. Does that mean that next season? No, it's, it's, it can't be. It's not. It's definitely not going to be. It's definitely not. It's definitely not. <laughs> I know. I, I, I would Dude, even don't say put that, that into existence. No, no. It's definitely not going to be. Oh mm -hmm. my god! No. Could you imagine? I mean, they, He'll come uh, out and be like, all right, does well, anybody want to kick your feet up and have a gummy there? <laughs> like, literally. Who, who got yours. in the most revenge? Yeah, <laughs> revenge? Uh, yeah that's exactly what it's going to be. No, I, I've always, I liked Kiefer um, last season. Uh, I was, I was, a, I was a fan of his. Um I mean, I could have honestly done without. Like, I don't think, I don't think it was like, I don't think it was anything that was like, oh my gosh, like Kiefer here. I don't feel like he necessarily added like any pizzazz to it in a way. Um, I liked, I liked, I liked the, his energy coming in. I feel like, cause here's the thing. I feel like, I, I, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like the energy, uh, or the energy, the, I think, I feel like the edit doesn't do the round table justice. Um, right. given the fact that like, uh, they just, again, they don't show very much of it. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, like, like I, I remember last season feeling like I, I feel like I barely saw Anthony and I feel like it was mostly the same here. So I, I, I can't I, I don't think I'd fault uh, fault Kiefer for it. I, I, I thought he had right. some good energy coming in with, with his had, little shuffle, yeah, I guess. He had a little, a little, a little shimmy to it. Um, shimmy. Sorry. And I like the And I like the And I like the suit. I would like to know if they like how long those usually actually are. And then also, like, if the. Um, you know, the leader of the round table or whatever, if they actually are leading the conversation or if it's kind of just like, okay, now just say, what about Betty? Okay, now say, what about Kevin? You know, like, or if it's actually they're like part of the discussion trying to facilitate it. I know Dr. Will would always be part of the conversation and kind of like point people in a way like, well, don't you think that's strategic though? Like, I, I think he did a good, or Dr. Will would do a good job with that type of thing. I wonder if they really do that here or if it, the person really just kind of like, just prompts them with the next topic and then they just move on yeah. to the next person. I think, I think it's tough. Like, especially if they're cycling new people every time, like right. I think part of the strength of Dr. Will doing it every time is that he's very used to doing it and it's Dr. Will. So like, right. he, he knows how to, how to lead a conversation in such a way that it's not going to influence people. Cause he knows how to influence people. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and he also like, you can trust him cause I can guarantee you Dr. Will couldn't care less about who wins the season. Right. Uh, so uh, he's kind of the perfect get for it. Um, whereas if, if it's like a new person every time, then, you know, how are they going to learn how to, you know, get better at it as they go? Um, so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. I, I feel like personally, I feel like they should probably just pick pick someone. Um, but uh, but I also like, again, as Melissa said, it's hard to know how they even like to structure them and format them and edit them. So mm -hmm. uh, I would say overall, the, the roundtables aren't really doing much for me in big brother canada um 
I feel like I, I tend to enjoy them more in the U S overall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I just wish they would give us more of it just cause I yeah. do love to see them discuss the winners. And then I do feel like, I feel like this time you really got the, the vibe of like where the jury was headed. And I feel like mm -hmm. a lot of the times they try and make it so that everyone has to say one pro one con about each person. And then it's like, Oh, well, we don't know who's going to win, but I would like to see, you know, where the jury's leaning because then also you could see if their speeches influence them or like their questionings actually influence them. I know that everyone says like, that doesn't really matter, but like, it would be interesting to see, you know, if everyone's saying, Oh, Josh is so great. And then all of a sudden you go to the end and he's answering these questions and they're like, this guy sucks. I'm not, I'm not voting for him. Like then that would be a good thing to see um, rather than just this stupid, like, okay, give one pro and one con about each person. Like that just kind of like doesn't do it for me. But I did feel like this one, they were clearly leaning towards Kevin and you got that vibe that if Kevin made it to the end, they would go for Kevin. And so the shock when Kevin made it to the end, it was like, Oh my God, I think he actually might win this. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Here we are. Uh, I mean, this is uh, this is it. This is the uh, the finale recap. Um, we are gonna, you know, again, we're gonna do a, a wrap up roundtable at some point. Um, I will be speaking to the final three tomorrow. Um, I, I believe how it will work is that I'll talk to. Uh, I, oh boy, it will be Josh and Betty together. Um, oh, damn. So uh, oh, hopefully, ooh, be messy, Riddle. Taryn. Please, Taryn, be messy. Please <laughs> be, be messy. messy. Please be messy. Are you Jacob, tell Kevin that Jacob, you met his roommates? How how are we? How are we going to be messy, Jacob? But what are we going to? What are we going to ask? I will. Messy? Well, I will. I, I will submit questions. I want. I want you to mm -hmm. ask: Is Josh? Hey, Betty. After you've had time to, you know, settle your feelings, is Josh still going to be invited? You know, be put into the wedding? Is he going to be invited mm -hmm. to the wedding? I want to hear good. that. I think the answer is uh, yes. I think Betty forgives him. She I mean, I think yeah, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. I don't listen. I think because even her interview with the wrist was like, you know, if this game, I still love him. I think give it a week. <laughs> I think give it a week outside where you can go into your own space. You can see what you know, because honestly, people on social media will like try to influence and push you into like, hey, you know what I mean? Like, Drrr. and so I say give it a week. You it, know what it, I it, want to know? You know what I want to see answered? I want Taryn to ask, uh, Josh, if Betty pulled this same move on you and cut you, mm. would you have voted for her to win? Mm. But I feel like I already know his answer to that. I think he's going to say, of course say I yeah. would. I yeah, love I Betty. Think, He'll yeah. say that, but at least there's like, if there's a pause, you know, then she'll know. It'd be interesting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, sometimes, sometimes it's good to ask questions that you know they're going to lie to you about, but, um, you know. Yeah. If it's a question that that has an answer that you clearly want and then you don't get it, then it's then it's a failure of a question. So you gotta it's it's you gotta be careful. I think. I mean, but you, um, I feel like you gotta see the temperature because you gotta see like, hey Betty, are we on business B time or are we on Patty wow. Betty time? So you gotta like figure figure it out which which one which one is she that day and to to really dive. I just I just want to make sure because like I'm like these interviews they're not in the game anymore. So I'm excited to be able to just like be like Be betty i love you awesome. like uh people love you you know what i mean um it's always it always crushes me to like interview these jurors and just be like all right next question i know uh, <laughs> show them any any love uh um yeah. and then so i will also be speaking with uh with kevin uh the, the winner that's literally Jeez. gonna be such like a so it's like a love fest ill i'm like uh, it's gonna yeah. be, oh, I love He's you. gonna be like oh you. my I god Darren. oh my god oh my ask god. him about me like, oh ask gosh, him about me ask about me yeah ask about I will, me yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm, i think i'm gonna so need jealous. uh <laughs> well, look, I'm sure I'm sure you will all have plenty of opportunity to talk to Kevin. Um, I guess so. <laughs> uh, may, I don't know. Maybe 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 Kevin maybe Kevin's too cool for us now. Maybe you know he's uh, he's That's big winner the of the show now. No, no, I don't think yeah. they get on the show. show. They win the show. They never want to come on. I mean, I think Kevin is going to start. You know. Kevin has a podcast next. You know what I mean? I, I think I think that's brewing. I, I think Yikes. I think that's brewing. <laughs> Jacob's like, Don't and I'm going ideas, to that podcast, Jacob. and I'm and I'm switching over. He's like, I'll be in chair number one for that podcast. <laughs> oh Could you imagine me and Taryn head to head? Oh my gosh! Oh my man. god! Oh Ooh, boy! Brutal. Taryn takedown season. Now, baby. now I'm getting a little excited, Jacob. Oh, as you Ooh. should. 
Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. I'm sure we're gonna uh look I I, I will uh we'll we'll do as many um accident uh, like other interviews as well I'd love to talk to you know Herman and Mo I would want to talk to Moose uh yeah. Betty uh, again uh, I'm sure we'll do some deep dives uh talk love to Helena to so dives. we'll do our best uh I mean top tier season deserves uh you know as top as much as, even it's though I am dead dead tired and exhausted we will work our way <laughs> you through. can like wait a minute too uh, you don't have to do it right away no no, no I, I got it we're gonna do it we're gonna get we're gonna we're gonna get through it it's just we're extending where the break is gonna come a little bit later that's what's gonna happen right, okay. so. and something else i want Tara, out of you i'm looking at you right now so since this is a top tier season 10 out of 10 would mm -hmm. you say mm -hmm. as you did you know your not your first, but like I like when you go and you sit down with them and you're in person. So I need you to drive your ass up up there. I need you to go sit down Where? with up to Canada. He's oh, can you drive in Toronto? I can drive <laughs> yes. to Toronto. Well, fi well, fly. You go find a way. From New York, to sit down. it's not too far. Exactly. You're, I look. I just flew to New York. Like I don't know if I'm ever doing that again. Uh... <laughs> Make a beeline. I'm telling you, but that's what uh, I want. I, I want. I want hardcore dedication. I want different locations, like you and Tiff. I want all of that. So you better look, give it look, to me, not, or else. Not everyone is. Not everyone is Tiffany. You know. Oh, I love. Yes, not I, I, gets I, the, I agree. The, the drive-in experience. I agree. Yeah. Someone in the chat saying that my house is the new Todrix. Imagine <laughs> 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 like oh, all the, God, the people from Toronto just start like hanging out <laughs> downstairs. Like they have a really great patio. I love that. So and they have parties <laughs> all the time. You said it was a mansion, so yeah. That I can go. I can go in pod. for sure. All, in. all right. All in. I love it. Uh, that's uh let's let's uh let's make sure that nobody is uh Chantel's house is not open for uh for, yeah. <laughs> for poppins apparently. God. Oh boy. So funny. Oh, but don't boy. be like too cute yeah. when you talk to Kevin. Don't be like don't be like too cute. Like don't like y'all like just, like You know who I, you know. how I am now. I'll be exactly that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be me. Chant yeah, Chantel is she just mm. exudes cute. That's uh, I mean y'all y'all close out the bars. Y'all close out the bars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jacob's jealous. I am. And I'm gonna be jealous of like you and Kevin, like having a little love, bro. Like, oh my God, I'm gonna be jealous of that too. So I'm just not gonna tune in. Well, Jacob, yeah. I might need to come to your house to do these interviews because uh, I've got garbage internet right now. <laughs> so <laughs> like, well, like, Kevin's back home. Maybe I'll get him to do it in front of my background. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> Yeah, Taryn will be like, where did you get that background? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, anything else that we should uh, talk about here to wrap up the season for now? Because, again, we've got more coming. Amazing. Arissa. Ah, yes. Arissa. So good, as, as always. So good, as always. Beautiful gowns. 10 out of 10. Like, Big Brother Canada, thank you for delivering an amazing season. Mm -hmm. Thank you for giving us like super fans who really love like the chaos and the strategy and the entertainment because you know, and sometimes in big brother season, they can come and they can swiftly go and then we're left like, duh. Um, but this one was amazing. And thank all of y'all as well. Um, Melissa Chantel, Taryn, and you know, um, I had a blast covering it. It was very sweet, very endearing, very, I just, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm getting emotional. It's so fun. Also, this is my first, like, um, my first finale one. So I'm like, oh, ooh, I'm like, you know, feeling it. And so, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, great season. Uh, so much fun. I've had such a good time, you know, recapping it with everybody and, you know, just like doing the stock watch and everything like that. It's been, it's been really fun. And I feel like we don't get that all the time to just like have a fun season one where we're not constantly like I feel like I haven't had to be like super irritated and super frustrated and super whatever the entire time I've been able to just kind of relax and have fun with it and I feel like that's what you really want in this season I I don't love the idea of you know constantly being upset or you know like having a, a hard time watching because I I'm I don't like the people or I don't like what's going on like this has just been pure fun. Um, great season, great gameplay, very important. And then, you know, a great winner. So honestly, so great, so fun. 
And what I also loved about this finale was that they utilized these personalities that we really liked. You know, they had that little cheesy segment. You know, they didn't need to put it in, but they just wanted to give us one last moment where we got to see Herman being, you know, the car salesman, like, announcer type host guy. Yeah, I loved and that. It was I so loved that. I didn't cute. even bring it up. I thought it was so great. I usually so hate cute. those like those little like intro things with the jury. Yeah. Usually they, it doesn't look like they're having any fun with it. It looks like they're just being forced to do it. This looked like they were having a great time. So they made me laugh. I thought it was adorable. The little Hollywood squares thing. It was just, so everyone was amazing. It was fantastic. Also shout out to um, Terrence transformation with his Wi-Fi settings because now you look amazing. Yeah. And um, you, 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 you. So shout out to up. that as well. Shout out to the glow up that, that transpired <laughs> and the consistency. Yes. Uh, well, it's, it's been so much fun. Uh, I, 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 we apologize that, uh, obviously this New York stuff kind of impacted the, uh, the finale, uh, the, the, the final bits of coverage here, but hopefully you've enjoyed some of it. It was very cool to be able to watch with all of the, uh, the people that were able to get in there. Um, and I, I apologize to anybody that, uh, was not able to make it. I tried to, to get to as many people as I could, um, to, to get them in and, and, and watch with us. Um, and it was so much fun to, uh, to be able to do that and to watch with, with some of you. So thank you all for coming out. Um, and, uh, you can watch the, the Twitch stream that I did while we were there. I think it was very, very fun to, uh, to see the reactions that we were getting in the moment. I also was able to film, uh, Amon and Asia reacting last <laughs> night to Kevin staying over Helena. Uh, I can only imagine what Amon is doing right now. Uh, so that was, that was great. Um, so I hope you guys were, uh, were able to enjoy, uh, some of that. As I said, plenty more, uh, coverage coming in the future. And, um, just, just thank you. Thank you all so much. You know, be, being here and getting to meet some of you in person, it's, it's, it's so great. Um, it, it really means so much to me that, uh, that we have such an engaged community that is so supportive of what we're doing and that, uh, they're so appreciative and they want to show that appreciation and, and let us know how much it means to them. And, uh, and I want to know how, how much I want you to know that how much it means to me, um, that you're all here all, all season long, every season. And, uh, to be able to cover a season like this, um, it's, it's, it's such a privilege and, um, it, it makes me so happy that, you know, that we've been sticking with it for so long because this is the show. This is the, an example of what the show can really be. And, um, it's, it's so great to be able to experience it with, with all of you, the listeners and with, with you guys, Chantel, Jacob, um, Melissa, fake photoshopped head and photos that we're taking, um, <laughs> we you know, we uh, being able to see <laughs> Uh, it, yes, um, it's it's so it's so amazing to be able to uh, to to be be involved in this community and, and talk with all of you guys, uh, the podcasters and listeners alike. And so, um, thank you all so so much for for being with us here. And um, you know, it uh, it just uh, it, it it means it means so much. So uh, that's that's what we got. Let's um, we don't want to lose you. We don't want to lose you. That we got. Like we've I'm got getting about, all emotional. Uh, <laughs> Like I had such a beautiful time these last couple of days. Yes. And like, you know, anyway, it's no. just, it's all been great. So I echo everything that you said. And like, I just have really enjoyed just the whole RHAP community and this whole experience has been so awesome. So I love that how tonight happened. It all makes everything make sense. And so I, I feel great, but also emotional. I'm gonna cry. Well, um, <laughs> We will be back in uh, probably what, like roughly two two months ish for yeah. Big Brother twenty four. Um, again, we'll, again, we'll have the we'll have postseason coverage, but in terms of the new season, uh, we'll be back just not too long, not too long. We will be back, and of course, Survivor's still going. I'm still doing the Survivor stock watch. The Circle started up uh, yes yesterday. It says it's Friday because it's past midnight here. Um, yesterday on Wednesday, uh, it uh, the circle started up, and so we'll have some circle coverage for you as well here in the meantime. Uh, but if we don't see you until Big Brother twenty four, uh, then um, you know we will see you then. In the meantime, you can follow us uh, on social media and check out all the other stuff we're doing. As I'm, I'm always going to be over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Taryn Armstrong, hanging out with all of you. Uh, it was so, so good to be able to meet some of the people from the Twitch channel, from my Discord community. Um, I, I, I truly love and appreciate all of you from there. And it was so great to meet you guys in particular uh, here in New York. Um, 
And uh, you can find me on Twitter as well here at Armstrong Taren, uh, if you uh, if you want. Um, you can find Melissa at it's Melissa with three A's. You can't find her in New York because she didn't come. Uh, <laughs> oh, but, I know. Uh, Very sad. So maybe stupid. maybe so in the stupid. future, maybe in the yeah. future we'll LA get her. Event in the summer, maybe. Maybe. Ooh, uh, maybe. Love it. Um, Jacob, where can people find you? People can find me in the streets, uh, but other than that, you can find me um, anywhere at Jacob J underscore Jones. Um, yeah, just really chilling. Yeah, TBA, just find me there. I don't know what I have going on in the near future besides life, but um, check me out. All right. And Chantel, <laughs> uh, where, can, where can people find you? Well, apparently people can find me living above Kevin Jacobs, the winner of season <laughs> 10 of Big Brother Canada. Apparently, that's where you can find me. But online, social media, I'm at ChanFranFran on Instagram, has all my socials. And you can find me at Reality Realness with three S's on YouTube. So there you go. All right. Well, <laughs> that's what we have for you for Big Brother Canada 10. Who would have thought that the 10 would live up to the prophecy? And so uh, and and truly be the chosen one. Oh my gosh! Uh, I just picked tough. that up. Oh my gosh! Season ten was epic of America. Wait, we're, okay. Oh, you weren't yes. here. You weren't here when we talked about that at the start of the podcast. Oh my gosh! I forgot. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're like really now. You're just realizing Wait. it. Oh, okay, like wow, damn. <laughs> hey, they did the damn thing. Come on now. Uh, all right. Well, thank you all again so so much for being with us all season long, and we will see all of you next season. <laughs>